Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sprint 224 review. Uh, this was a normal two-week sprint. Let's get started. I'll start with the overview, David on the UI, Adam on providers, Joe on the platform, and Keenan on the API. Um, as you can see, this was a relatively normal sprint with 49 PRs merged this sprint um, with a healthy split between bugs and enhancements. And over to David. Um, so in this sprint, APRs were merged into the UI. Uh, five of them were bug fixes and three of them were enhancements. Uh, for our first bug fix, um, we have the fix missing customization templates list. Um, this is a simple change. There was a variable that was uh, uh, mistyped in the UI and it was basically causing the table to not display correctly. So Gilbert managed to correct that. And so now the table should display as intended. Our next bug fix is the updated component names, IDs, and the credential mapper form. Uh, basically, when the form was being created, um, there were some names and IDs for some of the UI components uh, that were given you know, temporary names like test uh, that were never updated when the form was merged. Uh, we basically went back and corrected those. Uh, there's no actual change in the UI here. It's just to make the code easier to understand. Uh, next, we have the fixed provision custom specifications table. Um, pretty much the same as the first uh, bug fix. Uh, Gilbert found that, again, there was a typo in one of the variable names in the tables, and so he corrected it, and the table displays as it should. Um, and finally, our last bug fix is the fixed console warning for MIQ table cell button size. Um, basically, uh, the buttons in our UI tables uh, expect a size parameter. And uh, it, previously, we were sending them empty strings when we wanted them to be the default size, which was causing some warnings. And so Gilbert went and fixed that. So now it actually sends default string, uh, which the buttons understand to basically mean we want the default size so the warnings no longer show up. Uh, on to our enhancements. Our first one is the refactored MIQ structure list component. Uh, Jeffrey basically refactored the code the MIQ structured list and made it a lot easier to understand and easier to debug. Uh, again, no changes in the UI here, but uh, it should hopefully make fixing issues with the structured list a lot faster in the future, since it's used a lot in the UI. Uh, next, we have introducing payloads in Ansible playbooks. Uh, Jeffrey introduced a PR to display the payloads in the Ansible playbook summary page. Uh, he also added another PR that uh, refactored some of the test cases. And our final uh, change uh, this sprint is added better local file validation. Uh, Gilbert added more validation to the settings custom logos upload functionality. Um, basically, now when you try to upload a, a, like a, a JPEG or a file uh, for a logo, there's more checks to ensure the validity of the, uh, of the file. And with that, I'll pass it on to Adam. Thanks, David. Uh, for core, we made a change to ensure that we're only cleaning up uh, snapshots that are created as part of smart state analysis if there is a smart proxy role uh, enabled in the uh, in the zone. This was um, fixing an issue that a community user reported where they had two completely separate installations of manage IQ pointed at the same VC. And if smart state took long enough, one, appliance would start deleting the snapshots from the uh, from the other because uh, it didn't recognize the job quid in its database. So uh, now we'll only run that cleanup process if you have uh, smart state enabled for the for the zone. Uh, for Amazon, we updated the list of regions. This is something that we uh, unfortunately hadn't done uh, in a couple of releases. So it picked up a bunch of new ones. And we also threw up some PRs to hopefully automate it in the future so we don't uh, miss out on keeping those up to date. Uh, for Google, this one uh, was open for a bit, but we fixed the issue with API pagination. We uh, ended up forking the gem and then shortly after upstream merged it. So hopefully we can get back onto the upstream version. But uh, the symptom here was that even if you had more than 500 uh, instances of any particular type, we were only seeing the first 500 of them because Fog Google itself wasn't respecting the um, next page token that was re returned. So it was only getting the first page back. Uh, so we now fix that for all of the uh, collection types that Fog Google has. Uh, for Nuage, Joe fixed a bug where uh, Zeitwerk was failing to load uh, the message handler class for the event catcher. 
Uh, this is because the message handler subclasses the Cupid Proton one, and we were requiring it in the initialize as opposed to at the top of the file before the class definition. So that was a good fix there. Next slide. Uh, for IBM Cloud, Jay uh, updated the refresher to set the CPU core uh, attributes for resource pools. These are um, these are new columns that were added to schema recently, and they uh, represent a float value for the number of CPU cores that the resource pool has uh, in total. Uh, IBM Cloud and, and HMC both have this, and so uh, he's setting these new properties. Uh, he also fixed a bug with some new flavors on VPC, which have nil disks, and we were uh, not handling that properly. This was causing the refresh to fail, so we fixed that up. Uh, we also bumped all of the IBM Cloud SDK gems to a newer version that will allow us to pull in the latest uh, version of the HTTP gem, which we were uh, wanting to upgrade to in order to fix some other issues. Uh, for HMC, like we said, we updated the uh, resource pools to set uh, the CPU core attributes. Jay also uh, updated the default HMC port to be 443. The older port is still available, but is going to be uh, deprecated in an upcoming version. And, eight, and 443 has been available for a while, so that's the, uh, the recommended path for HMC. Uh, for OpenStack, we fixed a bug where the loaded specs were causing uh there's a different key we're looking for a symbol and it was a string i believe uh essentially it meant that even if you had cupid installed locally openstack was always skipping the cupid proton test because it was checking to see if the gem was there and looking at the wrong key uh, so now if you have cupid proton installed locally uh, you can run the openstack cupid proton specs again and next slide i believe that's it for providers over to joe thanks adam for platform enhancements and improvements, Keenan updated virtual attributes release notes. He did a release of 6.1.2 and he fixed the specs in manage IQ to work with uh, version 6.1.2. Next, Brandon added no, no affinity to the orchestrator to support OpenShift 4.14. As Adam described, Jay added the resource pools column for the CPU core available reserve and uh, limit fields. Next, Keenan added a virtual belongs to from auth key pair going to ext management system. Jason, Jason dropped the no longer used MIQ SSH in the tools directory. And he also updated the open SSF best practices badge on the readme. Next slide. For platform bugs, I fixed the GitHub action workflow to update the message catalogs. Um, that have been broken since uh, we made Zite work the default loader. Next, uh, Adam updated our dependencies to use the fork uh, uh, fog Google gem for the pagination fixes he previously described. Next, I fixed the references to PG log, which were changed to uh, log in Postgres 10 as the default log directory. Uh, Adam already described the snapshot cleanup fix he made in core. A community user fixed an issue where the username in the domain backslash user format wasn't parsed like the we were previously doing the domain at user format. And that was leading to multiple users for the same AD account. And I removed a warning against using PG dump uh, through uh, Appliance Console since both PG base backup and PG dump are supported. That's it for the platform. Next slide. Cool. Uh, so um, we do have uh, a, a lifecycle table in our database, and we're going through and cleaning that up. So our change over in the API was actually to remove um, that table access uh, in the API. Uh, it takes a little while to uh, to get to the destination of removing this table. On to Jason for the rest. And that's it for the Sprint 224 review. Our next Sprint 225, the review will be on November 15th at the usual place and time. Uh, and as always, I'd like to thank all the presenters today, uh, all the contributors to Manage IQ, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>